Today on the show is episode number two of our Batman Eternal weekly recap. Batman Eternal issue number two, the follow-up to Batman Eternal number one, obviously. And a lot of my predictions are actually coming true. So the episode starts out in the mayor's office, they're actually dealing with the repercussions of what happened in the previous issue, and they still don't know how many casualties there are. The mayor is having a really hard time dealing with this. You can actually tell by his body language and the way that he's talking, it's totally overwhelming him. Then in the last panel, a man walks in and it shocks the mayor because he wasn't expecting to see this man whatsoever. On the next page, we see the media and they're having to make a decision on whether they're going to post the article about the accident or not. It's very evident that not everyone is actually happy about the article and it's actually worded as if it's about the Joker and not about Jim Gordon. I think that's very relevant to today's media because if you didn't know, the media just tries to control us with fear and that's exactly what they're trying to do here. Control the civilians of Gotham with fear. Still, nonetheless, the article is posted and the person that has to post it isn't very happy about it. I actually love the following two pages. We actually see each individual Bat family member find out about what's happened. And this is something that I think is very important for Batman Eternal because it's about the Bat family and not just Batman. I especially love Batgirl finding out about what's happened because Jim Gordon is her father. Her father's life has just changed for the worse, and there is nothing that she can do. Also, I do find it cute how they included Harper Row in all of this. They're really trying to push Harper Row into the Bat family, which I'm okay with now, but if you asked me a few months ago what I thought of that, I would have been like, no, you're crazy. You can't, you can't have Harper Row in there. But after some reflection, she's not that bad of a character. I'm just not a huge fan of hers. The next interesting thing is that Batwoman was included. And Batwoman has never been considered part of the Bat family. Maybe like the Bat family's distant cousin, but never the core Bat family. That being said, in terms of detective and fighting skills, she is one of the only Bat family members that is equal to Batman in every way. And finally, we see Tim Drake reacting to the situation and he's clearly venting his anger out by destroying a bunch of robots and he's asking to return from New York to Gotham. That's an important thing to take note of. The Bat family isn't just in Gotham. They're spread all around the world. There is a reason that for a while it was called the Bat Network. Now, if you haven't picked up on it by now, this issue is mostly character interactions, which I love because I think that is the best way to tell a story. But I know a lot of people might not really like that and it doesn't exactly make it newcomer friendly. So Batman turns up at the police station and he's all like, don't worry, Jim, we're going to get you out of here. I just need to test your blood to make sure that you weren't injected with anything by Professor Pig, even though that's not really his style. This seems beyond him. If you recall, I did say that there might have been some third party intervention with Jim and it could be Professor Pig, but that seemed a bit too much for him and not really his style. So I predicted that very accurately and I'm proud of that. So we're back with the mayor and the silhouette man on the rooftop and it's basically revealed that the mayor's previous election was rigged. It was rigged so the mayor would win, which is a huge shock. It's also revealed that the mayor and the silhouette man feel like Gotham has changed a lot because of Batman and they feel like they don't have control over it anymore, which they should. It's hinted that the silhouette man intentionally had Jim Gordon taken down because he, and I quote, sided with the freaks. I find these two's relationship very interesting because the mayor clearly has a high amount of respect for this man, but the way the respect is done, it seems more like fear. Next, we see a man standing by the accident scene and a policewoman comes up to him and is all like, no, you can't be here. And the man turns around and is all like, you're gonna forget that I was ever here and his eyes start glowing and there's a skull in them and it's really, really trippy. And the man basically says that this policewoman is wasting her time going after him who is just looking onto the crime scene that's full of dead bodies as opposed to going after the bigger evils in Gotham that are definitely afoot tonight. And this man says, trust me, I know all about evil. Now anyone who reads Batman probably already knows, but for everyone that doesn't read Batman, 
That quote means this guy is a good guy and we can totally trust him, mostly, probably, I hope so. It's in here again. Every time I see it, I just think, where are the briefs? Give me the briefs. Give me the brief and where the briefs are. Next, we go to the happy-go-lucky place that is Arkham Asylum, and there is a man there that has been screaming for days, apparently he can hear voices below him, and none of the nurses are taking him seriously, and they're just like, should we up his medication? The man is all like, I can hear a name, these voices are whispering a name, but the nurses leave, and the man turns around, and there's this ghostly apparition behind him. I actually really love the artwork on these pages, especially when it's all like, say it to me, say it out loud. And that man's face, it, like that's in pain. And you can feel that pain when you look at it. And that's not something that's easy to get across, especially in a naturally violent comic. But the man says the name out loud, which is Blackfire, and he has this electric impulse put through him, and that's the last that we see of him in this issue. Meanwhile, elsewhere at Gotham MTA, Batman is looking up all the security footage to see what's going on, and who should turn up but Catwoman, and she instantly notices that Batman is on edge. Anyway, Batman does something to the security cameras so he can get a better look at the man Jim Gordon shot, and as soon as he sees him, he's like, Oh my god, no, no, it can't be him, not him. Before we can find out who this him is, we're back on the rooftop with the mayor and the silhouette man, and silhouette man has this reoccurring thing of picking up roses. Now roses, for all of you that don't know, actually represent two things. The most commonly known representation of roses is love, but the other thing is war, and this man is clearly trying to start a war. The Silhouette Man is really reiterating that this city shouldn't belong to heroes, it should belong to the mayor and those around him. It's really interesting that the mayor really panders to this man's will, especially because this man says to the mayor, you don't need to do anything other than play your part. Batman runs away and Catwoman chases after him and is all like, so who is this man? What has got your briefs all in a bunch? Who is this man? And the man turns out to be Carmine Falcone, one of the most powerful crime lords in Gotham's history. Carmine Falcone, for all of you that don't know, was one of Batman's main bad guys from 1987 to 1997 when he died. The fact that Carmine Falcone is back is not only surprising, but really shows how ambitious this comic is and how much it is going to change everything. I really liked this issue of Batman Eternal. There were a lot of really interesting character interactions, which is my favourite way to read a story. What I loved is how at the beginning the mayor was this big strong gruff man that was like, oh my god I can't believe all of this is going on, but as soon as Carmine Falcone turns up, the mayor is a puppy. Issue number two definitely wasn't as explosive as issue number one, but it was definitely a much better read. I've already read issue number three, but please do not leave spoilers down below. Other people might not have read it yet. It's super effective! Okay guys, that is it for today. What did you think of Batman Eternal issue number two? Please let me know in the comments down below. And also don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more recaps. And also don't forget to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. My name is Faust, this has been Exploring Comics, and it is super effective.